I've hurt my head a little bit. <sighs> Being dead is hard, especially during Halloween, because everyone thinks it's so much fun to dress up as dead, but they have no idea what it's actually like. I just have to walk around in this endless abyss of pain because somebody hit me over the head one time. You know what is good about being dead though? I have like this endless amount of time to just read books. And ironically, the best ones that I like are the horror spooky ones. You guys wanna know a really scary horror story? This might look like an average book, but it is water damaged. It's a water damaged book. And even worse, it's been shot through with an arrow. Can you see the holes? What a horror story. What a terror. There are some real monsters out there, and I've been killed by one of them, and I still think the person who did this is worse. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked now. That happens ever since I got hit on the head. I just don't remember things as well. Horror stories, that's it. I'm going to give you guys a bunch of horror story recommendations. I mean, there are quite a few decent, scary books out there, and I think that you guys will enjoy them. The News Flesh series by Myra Grant. So the first one in the series is Feed and it is amazing. So this book has zombies in it and I'm pretty glad that I died from a head wound and not from zombies because I tell you after reading this I have learned that it is a slow painful death. You either get teared apart limb by limb and your brain's eaten or in the worst case scenario you get bitten by one of these guys and then you're gonna have to wait to turn into a zombie? No thank you, I would just like to die once then. So this follows a brother and sister duo who are actually news reporters following a politician's journey. At the same time they're also in the middle of a zombie apocalypse but it is a really good book with action packed and plot twists that you won't ever see coming. And I Dressed in Blood and Girl of Nightmares by Candare Blake. You guys like ghosts? I know you like ghosts. You guys like me and I'm a ghost so of course you guys like ghosts. Well Anna here is actually a ghost possessing a house and anyone who steps foot inside of it gets murdered. Not like a you know suffocate and die. I mean like their body is ripped in half by this ghost who is covered in blood and murders them. That is until Kaz Lockwood, Ghost Hunter, basically a Winchester comes to town and he's gonna take care of Anna. Except that when he steps into that house, he doesn't get killed and she doesn't go crazy. She's actually kind of friendly towards him. So that's kind of uh, the start of the storyline because what's the ghost hunter supposed to do with a friendly ghost who's only friendly to him? Now I do like my zombie books, but that's mostly because there isn't a much more worse death than what I got besides zombies. So you also have the Ashes trilogy by Ilsa J. Bick. This is kind of a twist on zombies. Basically this electromagnetic pulse went across the entire world and it killed a bunch of people. Um, a few people survived it and found that they had these magical abilities and a bunch of other people just turned cannibalists. And so you follow the story of a young girl called Alex and a few of her companions companions as she pretty much just tries to survive. The Escape the Furnace series by Alexander Gordon Smith and the first one in that one is Lockdown and when I read this book, oh my god, I was so creeped out. This is a horrible book to read, um, but like a good book to read if you guys want to get kind of spooked out. Like some really creepy stuff goes down in this book and I tell you what, I would never ever want to be a character in this book. Basically you have Alex who was just a kid but this kid is apparently being charged for murder even though he did not do it. He is still getting sent to the furnace and the furnace is not just a prison. Oh no, it is this deep dark underground dang old place that kids get locked up for doing really bad crimes. But there is something else lingering in the dark and this poor kid has no idea what is coming to him. Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. And so the first one, which is this one here, it isn't as creepy and horrible as the rest of these books, but for the images that are in this book alone, I think that they kind of deserve to be in the horror section. I went to the ghost library one time and I picked this book up and I put it down, picked it up, put it down, picked it up. People were freaking out because it's a flying book and stuff like that. But I, um, I finally decided to read it, and although it is creepy in parts, it isn't as scary as these books. But I can assure you that the pictures in this book will haunt you for the rest of your life. 
So this follows the story of a young boy called Jacob, who was just a human boy doing his thing. He goes to this creepy island with his family, finds this creepy house about this orphanage of these kids and these creepy photos, and it's just very creepy, okay? And then all of a sudden he finds that he can teleport back in time to when this orphanage was still up and running with the kids inside as well. And stuff goes down and everyone's lives are in danger and it is super creepy. The Monstrumologist series by Rick Yancey and this one you're in for a treat. You have a young boy called Will and he is basically an orphaned apprentice of a doctor but this doctor does really rare things and he basically does autopsies on monsters. And then one day a very mysterious case falls on their doorstep with these crazy monsters that are absolutely horrible and killing and they're terrible creatures and they find that their life is completely about to change as they have to try to stop this like plague of killer monsters monsters from coming into their town. I think a lot of us know this next classic tale and that is Coraline by Neil Gaiman. If you haven't watched the movie for this, what exactly are you doing? I mean like I was alive like when that movie came out and I watched it and I was like that is some creepy ass stuff and now that I'm dead I'm still like that's some creepy ass stuff you know. You have Coraline who moves to this new house and then one day she stumbles through a door and finds that she's in a different version of a house with other mother and other father and other friends and it all seems okay you know she's got these two lives like alternative houses until things start to go wrong and it gets pretty crazy. Forest of Hands and Teeth by Carrie Ryan. This one follows the story of a young girl called Mary and basically she lives in this town where they just follow the rules. The sisterhood always knows best, the guardians will protect and serve, the unconsecrated will never relent and Mary lives in the middle of this town. This town though however is in the middle of a forest and in this forest there are fast running zombies that just want to kill everyone. No, there's blood in my hair. <sighs> And because you can never have enough zombie books, The Enemy by Charlie Higson. And this one is a big series and it is amazing. If you guys think that your main characters are safe, they're not safe. I wasn't safe and I'm a good character, okay? I'm like the favorite character. I'm like the funny bisexual friend, okay? And I still died. Oh, of course I died. So you have the enemy, basically everyone under the age of 13 or 14, I can't remember, like I said, my brain does not always work, turned into zombies. So basically you have these children running around, killing their parents because they're now trying to eat them alive and they're trying to survive on their own. And it follows the story of a group of children who are basically um, are trying to survive. It is absolutely crazy, like there's so much blood and gore and it makes you pretty much jump out of your seat, it's action packed and so much stuff happens but like you are rooting for these kids and you will like probably be in tears at some points but it was so so good. One thing that I've learned in the afterworld is that vampires don't get the rep that they deserve you know a lot of people actually like vampires all the vampires that I have met are so rude so mean and so damn thirsty kind of like the vampires in The Coldest Girl in Cold Town. Like, there are some of the vampires in here who I even admire. They're like crazy and reckless and fun and they just kill everybody like if they want to. So you have Cold Town, which are basically these cities where like vampires and humans can go and it's described as a party 24 seven and it's televised for everyone to see. But the only problem with Cold Town is that once you go in there, you can't leave. And poor old Tana here, she goes through those doors and she goes into Cold Town and everything changes for her. Like, can you imagine being a human in a vampire town and you have to stay there for the rest of your life? You're pretty much just like a taco. Everyone wants the taco. There has got to be like better ways to die than blunt force trauma because my headache is never ending. Oh. Jesus, I need to get some stitches or something. Anyway, that's a bunch of Halloween books that you guys can totally read and enjoy and not sleep at night over. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I've kind of got a feeling that someone is going to raise me from the dead soon. Like, I get this tingling sensation, so hopefully I can get some stitches on this thing and I'll be back to normal, like, in no time. I will miss 
haunting people though, it's, you know, that was definitely a plus side. As a disclaimer, I am actually 100% totally okay unless a reading slump counts as an injury, but I don't think it does in this case. So thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys have a lovely bookish day and that great things happen to you and hopefully I'll see you guys again soon. Yeah, this is basically all just like fake flesh, um, makeup and then fake blood. Um, it really isn't like the best job that I've done, but hey. I looked dead, right? The Way Chronicles is an Australian based uh, book box that ships worldwide. It is filled with amazing goodies and a recently released YA book.